Okay, in this video we want to look at something called a Pythagorean triple and get an idea for what not only what it is but how to write down all possible Pythagorean triples. So here's the definition. So a uh, triple of natural numbers so I'll write it like this. We have x, y, and z in n cubed is a Pythagorean triple if x squared plus y squared equals z squared. In other words, it satisfies the Pythagorean equation. So the Pythagorean formula. So now uh, let's see how this relates to something maybe you've seen before in geometry. So if we have a right triangle with sides x, y, and z, then we know immediately that x squared plus y squared is z squared. So if you have a Pythagorean triple, then you know you have uh, side lengths of a possible right triangle. So let's look at some examples. So um, three, four, five is a very like common example of a right triangle. So a three, four, five right triangle. And so this is a Pythagorean triple because three squared plus four squared. So that's nine plus 16, which is 25, which is five squared. Okay, good. So another pretty common one is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. So this is a Pythagorean triple because 5 squared plus 12 squared is 25 plus 144, um, which is 169, which is 13 squared. Good. So let's look at one more. So 6, 8, 10. So this is a Pythagorean triple because 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 36 plus 64, which equals 100, which equals 10 squared. So you might notice, notice something about the first Pythagorean triple that we have in our example and the last Pythagorean triple. And this one, we could factor a 2 out of every member of this triple and we end up with the first one. And so likewise we could factor a 4 out of the resulting equation and we would end up with the resulting equation that's related to the first one. So this brings us to an important concept of a primitive Pythagorean triple. So a Pythagorean triple is called primitive if the GCD of x, y, and z is 1. So our first example is a primitive Pythagorean triple because the GCD of 3, 4, and 5 is 1. The second example is also a primitive Pythagorean triple because the GCD of 5, 12, 13 is 1. But the last example is not a primitive Pythagorean triple because the GCD of 6, 8, and 10 is 2, which is not 1. And in fact, this last one is in some way some descendant of the first example. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to showing uh, or getting some formula that could generate Pythagorean triples. Okay, so previously we defined what it meant for a triple X, Y, and Z to be a Pythagorean triple and a primitive Pythagorean triple. So let's see what it takes to find all primitive Pythagorean triples. So let's start with a supposition. So let's suppose that X, Y, and Z is a primitive Pythagorean triple. And let's see what we can say about X, Y, and Z just given the fact that it's a primitive Pythagorean triple. So let's look at the following questions. So is it possible that X um, and Y are 
even. So let's look at that first question. So um, if x is even, then we can write x equals 2a, and we could write y equals 2b if y is even, which tells us that x squared plus y squared equals 4a squared plus 4b squared, um, which equals 4 times a squared plus b squared. And now that's equal to z squared, given the fact that this is a Pythagorean triple. But now notice that tells us that 4 divides z squared from this last bit of the equation, which tells us that 2 divides z, which tells us that z is also even. So if x and y are even, then z is also even, which means the GCD of x, y, and z is at least 2. It can't be 1. These are not co-prime. So is this possible that they're both even? So no, it is not possible. Great. So now let's look at the companion question. So is it possible that x and y are both odd? So is this possible? So let's suppose that x is odd, so we can write x as 2a plus 1. And if y is odd, we can write y as 2b plus 1. Good. And so now that will give us x squared plus y squared equals 2a plus 1 quantity squared plus 2b plus 1 quantity squared. So now if we multiply out those binomials, and we can combine like terms in such a way that we get 4 times a squared plus b squared plus a plus b plus 2, and we know that that's equal to z squared. So now notice that z squared is even, but on top of that, z squared is not a multiple of 4. So, but it's impossible for a perfect square to be a multiple of 2, but not a multiple of 4. So that tells us that z squared is not the square of um, a natural number. Again, to reiterate, because it's a multiple of 2, but it's not a multiple of 4. Okay, good. So what have we found out? We found that it's not possible for x and y to be even. It's not possible for x and y to both be odd. That means one needs to be even and one needs to be odd. So I'll clean up the board, um, and then we'll dive further into this. Okay, let's jump back into it. So we suppose that x, y, and z is a primitive Pythagorean triple. And before we noticed that x and y cannot both be even and they cannot both be odd. So that means we could take one to be even and one to be odd. So without loss of generality, I'll take x to be even, sorry, x to be odd and y to be even. And then let's recall Given the fact that they're a Pythagorean triple, we have x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So now notice, that means that x squared is odd, y squared is even, but that means z squared is odd. So that means immediately we know that z is also an odd number. Okay, great. So from here, what we'll do is take this equation, x squared plus y squared equals z squared, and we'll rearrange it a little bit. So we'll rearrange it to give us y squared equals z squared minus x squared. And now that we've rearranged it in this form, this right-hand side is begging for us to factor it using a difference of squares. So we can factor that, and let's see what we get. 
So we can factor this to z minus x times z plus x. Good. And now let's recall that x is odd and z is odd. And whenever you add two odd numbers or subtract two odd numbers, you get an even number. So that means z minus x and z plus x are both even. So let's write that down. So notice that z minus x um, and z plus x are even. Good. So that means we can write, so we can write z minus x equals 2m. Good. So if it's even, we can write it as a multiple of 2. And then we can write z plus x equals 2n, where m and n are appropriate natural numbers. Okay, good. Now we'll take this equation and rewrite this equation with this new data. So we have the following. y squared equals, so now we have 2m times 2n, so that's equal to 4 times mn. So we have y squared is equal to 4mn, but then let's also recall also recall that y is even, so we can write y equals to 2k, which tells us that y squared equals 4k squared. <clears throat> okay, good. So now notice that gives us the following equation. So we have 4k squared equals 4mn, which tells us that k squared equals m times n. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so over the last couple of steps, we've amassed the following information. So we found that x has to be odd, y has to be even. Actually, they have to have the opposite parity, but we'll just take x to be odd. We'll set y equal to 2 times k. We'll set m equal to z minus x over 2. And we'll set n equal to z plus x over 2. So different from the last board, I had solved those two equations for m and n. So we argued that z minus x and z plus x were both even, which means we could write them as twice some natural number. Okay, so we also ended up with the fact that m times n equals k squared, so a perfect square. So the next step is we want to claim that m and n are relatively prime. So let's see how that goes. So our claim is that the GCD of m and n is 1. So so let's prove that. So now notice that m is equal to z minus x over 2 and n is equal to z plus x over 2. So let's suppose that d divides m and d divides n. Good. So that tells us that d must divide m plus n. Okay, that's good. So, but notice that m plus n using this equation is z. So that means that d must also divide z. Good. And then similarly, we have d also has to divide x. But if something divides z and x, then that means d divides the gcd of x, z. But that means d divides 1, because we've assumed that the gcd of x and z is 1. But then if we have d divides 1, then that tells us that d has to be equal to 1. So there's a little bit of a trick right here. So the gcd of x and z, so if d divides the gcd of x and z, well, sorry, if 
the GCD of X and Z is not one, and since X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared, then the GCD of X, Y, and Z will also not be one. So there's a little bit of a trick here that I've skipped. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then let's see what that can give us. Okay, so in the last step, we noticed that M times N was equal to K squared, a perfect square with the GCD of M and N equals 1. So from here, it follows that M equals P squared and N equals Q squared. In other words, M and N are themselves perfect squares. And I should say here, with the GCD of P and Q equals 1. <clears throat> So this sentence is going to be left as a homework exercise, but it's not too hard to guess that this should be the case. Okay, good. So now let's see where we are. We have m equals z minus x over 2, n equals z plus x over 2, and then um, furthermore, we know that m and n are as follows. So let's notice the following. So here we have p squared equals z minus x over 2, we have q squared equals z plus x over 2, good, which that shows us the following, that tells us that 2p squared equals z minus x, and then 2q squared equals z plus x, and then recall that y squared was equal to z minus x times z plus x, which is equal to 4 p squared q squared, which shows us that y is in fact 2 p q. Good. So that together with these two equations, which can be used to solve for x and z, so in this case we get x equals q minus p, and we get z equals p plus q. So now looking at each of these three equations, we have some way of writing down uh, z, y, or x, y, and z um, in terms of these numbers p and q. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll have a summary. Okay, so throughout this video we've established this following theorem. So if x, y, and z is a primitive Pythagorean triple, so no, notice that means that the GCD of x, y, and z is 1, and x squared plus y squared equals z squared, then there exist co-prime natural numbers, p and q, one even and one odd, such that x is q minus p, y is 2pq, and z is p plus q. So as an example, let's look at the following, p, q, x, y, z. So now we can use this theorem to generate some Pythagorean triples. So if we take 1 and 2 for p and q, that'll give us the familiar 3, 4, 5 of a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Now if we take 2 and 3 as p and q, that'll give us the 5, 12, 13 as the other common right triangle. Now let's look at 3, 8 as an example. So if we take 3, 8, that'll give us 53, 48, 73. So that's probably the sides of a right triangle that aren't too familiar. And then maybe one more. Let's look at 24 and 37. So that's going to give us 793, 1776, and then finally 1945. 1945. So as you can see, using this theorem, we can generate Pythagorean triples pretty easily.